Hello class. In this video, we're going to talk about factoring, specifically the greatest common factor uh, type of factoring. <clears throat> so before we get started, let's talk about what factoring is. Factoring is breaking down or dividing a number into its factors. Now, to get the concept of that, we're going to go over what's known as prime factorization. Uh, that's something you probably heard of when you were in like middle school. Uh, basically, if we have a number like 48, and I ask you to factor 48 for me, meaning to break it down, let's go ahead and break that down. If I want to break down 48, I would look for numbers that divide, uh, you know, that divide 48 by. And I normally would start with something like maybe 2. Uh, but in this case, I'm doing a multiplication table, so we're going to start with 6 times 8. Okay, then we're going to break that down some more. We're going to get 2 times 3. We're going to break the 8 down. We're going to get 2 times 4. Okay, now 2 can't be broken down anymore, so we just rewrite that. 3 can't be broken down anymore, so we can't rewrite that. It's another 2. 4 can be broken down into 2 times 2. At this point, 48 okay, has been broken down using what's known as prime factorization. Okay, but we actually just broke down 48. We factored it. So that's what that's that's the concept of factoring. So breaking down. Now in this particular example, okay, let's look for a minute. What is a prime? Or what's a composite? These numbers down here are prime numbers. They're prime numbers because you really can't divide them uh, with any number other than one or itself. That's basically what a prime number is. And a composite basically are numbers that you can divide with other numbers other than one or itself. All right? So let's look at another example of prime factorization right quick before we, keep, before we move on to the greatest common factor. So let's take this number, uh, let's take this uh, number negative 52 AB cubed. So negative 52 AB cubed. And if we break that down, there's different ways to look at it. So we want to just look at the number first. And let's break down this number. And uh, 52, if we break it down, it'll be 2 and uh, 27. Okay? And we have to make it one of them negative so that we get a negative 52. I'm going to go ahead and just make this uh, 2 a negative. And so negative 2 can't be broken down anymore. Okay, what about 27? That's basically a 3 times 9. And 2, 3, and I'll break this down. So now, okay, I have factorized, I did a prime factorization on 52, and I mean negative 52, and this is the fa uh, prime factors that I got. Now, what about A? Since A is only to the first power, that is the only A that exists. Okay? So that's the only A that exists since only to the first power. What about B? Since it's to the third power, so that's basically B times B times B to get B cubed. So here, to break it down, I'll just say B times B times B. Since I have three Bs, B cubed, I have three Bs. This is the factored form of negative 52 AB cubed. All right, if you miss any of that, go back and rewind, pause, whatever you need to do. So let's now get into uh, what's known as greatest common factor. And what is a greatest common factor? Well, basically a greatest common factor, is, it, what it is, is just by definition, it's a common factor between whatever numbers you're comparing, and it's the biggest one you can find. So let's look at our example here with the constants and variables. We're going to start with a constant first. So 40, if I ask you what is the greatest common factor between 40 and 64? So 40 and 64. Okay, and I'm just going to write them out here so you can see how, we, how we're doing this. All right, to figure out what the uh, greatest common factor is, let me write it this way. Okay, what we need to do is find the factors of 40 and 64. Okay, and we basically do that by, you know, trial and error. All right, so with 40, let's write 40 down here first, right? Uh, with 40, uh, we know what two numbers multiply to 40. We'll say 1 and 40. All right. And we got 2 and 20. 3 doesn't work. We got 4 and 10. And then we got 5 and 8. Okay? So those are basically the factors of 40. I'm going to go ahead and write them up here 
uh, you know, this way, all right? So I've got a one, I also got a two, um, also got a, a, a four, a five, an eight, a 10, and a 20, okay? Those are all the factors of 40. Let's do the one for 64. So we're gonna look for factors of 64, meaning what numbers multiply together to get 64. Well, let's do that now. Let's see if we get uh, one and 64, of course, right? Which we never use. Uh, two and 32. And we got three, uh, actually four and 16. And then we got eight and eight. So if I multiply any of these two numbers together, right? I get 64. So I'm gonna list it over here. So I have one, and then I've got two, then I've got um, four, then I got six, then I got eight, I got 16, and I have 32. Since I wrote them all up here, I'm gonna go ahead and erase them from down here. And notice only like if I had two eights, I'm only gonna write it once, okay? so. Okay, now that I've got this, okay, what I'm gonna look for, since I know that these numbers are the factors of, these numbers are the factors of 40 and these numbers are the factors of 64, I'm gonna look for the biggest or the highest number because I'm looking for the greatest common factor. Notice that if you look over here, you've got these are, in, they're a common factor, but it's not the greatest. This is also a common factor, but it's not the greatest. So if I move on down the line, the biggest numbers that I see that I see that are common between these two numbers, between 40 and 64, is 8. So that is going to be my greatest common factor. So my greatest common factor for these two numbers is 8. That make sense? All right. Now, let's do one for variables. Now, this one's a little bit uh, simpler. Okay. I'm just going to write a line right here. Okay, so what you got to do is we're going to we're going to we're going to look for greatest common factor between this number and this number. So it'll be a squared b to the fifth power. Okay, and then this other number is a cubed b to the fourth c. Uh, in this instance, when you have variables, all you have to do to find the greatest common factor between them is pick the one with the smallest power, all right? But the rule is factors must exist in all the terms. So whatever, is, whatever I use for my GCF, so my greatest common factor for this variable, okay, both factors must exist in both terms. The only factors that exist in both terms is the A and the B, okay? The C doesn't exist here, so I can't use that as part of my GCF. So my greatest common factor for this particular number between these two numbers is going to be a squared since it's the lowest power between this one and this one and b to the fourth since this is the smallest power between this one and this one okay so this is my gcf for the variables that i compare this is my gcf for the very i mean for the numbers between 40 and 64. if you have any questions on that pause rewind go back and see what we talked about all right now so this gets us into the factoring portion of the greatest common factor, you know, factoring, uh, where we're going to look at a polynomial and we're going to factor, um, we're going to, we're basically going to uh, factor it using GCF factoring. So I've used these two numbers we previously uh, used in our example, but I'm going to have to rewrite this up here. So let me just erase all this. Huh? I'm going to leave it up here. Put a line over here. So here's here's the numbers that we're trying to this number and this number. We want to find a GCF of, and it's basically being subtracted. So we got 64 a squared b to the fifth, okay, minus 40 a to the third b to the fourth c. All right. So what we want to do is we want to find the greatest common factor between this number and this number. And we're, what we want to do is we want to break this down using GCF. Okay. We're not just finding the GCF. We're going to find whatever whatever remains. So, between these two numbers, we need to find the GCF. Well, we already did, we already, we already found the number, uh, the GCF between these two numbers, which is eight. So let's go ahead and write that down, okay? And also between the variables, which we did, we did that already, 
between this th this set of variables and this set of variables, okay, we already found it to be a squared b to the fourth. So this is my greatest common factor between this number and this number, or this term and this term. Now, when we're factoring though, we must write what's left, okay? So what we're gonna do is, when we're breaking this polynomial down, okay, what we did is we took out the a, a squared b to the fourth from this one and this one, and we gotta write in here what's left of these terms. And to do that, all we have to do is we have to divide uh, this term by the GCF and put it here. And then we have to divide this term by the GCF and put it here. And then we'll have our answer. So let's go ahead and do that now. So here I've got 64, a squared b to the fifth divided by eight, uh, a squared b to the fourth. All right, so 64 divided by eight is eight. A squared, a squared, they, bit of a, they cancel. B to the fifth divided by B to the fourth is just B. So now, this is what remains when we divide uh, this term by its GCF. Now let's do the same thing for the 40 over here. I'll put that minus sign here already. So we're gonna write what's left here, right? So it'll be 40, A to the third, B to the fourth, C, divided by eight, which is the GCF again, uh, 8a squared, b to the fourth. Okay? So let's go ahead and see what we get when we do that. Well, 40 divided by 8 is 5. So we knock that out. Then we got 8 to the third divided by a squared is just a. That's gone. b to the fourth, b to the fourth. Is that b to the fourth? Yes. And that's gone. And we have c up here. Alright? So what we have is the factored form of this polynomial, okay, this binomial right here, is going to be this number times this number, okay? So we just broke this down into its two factors. Does that make sense? Now, if I was to multiply this number times this number, I would get this. This number times this number, I would get this, you know, through distribution. And that is the lesson on greatest common factor. Thank you.